Oh no. Yep, that's me. Both of them, actually. You're probably wondering how I even got into this situation. It Takes Two is a two-player game, well, duh, that puts you in the shoes of two parents, Cody and May, as they work together and combine their powers to conquer the world of their child Rose's imagination, all the while struggling to overcome their personal boundaries destroying their marriage. Unfortunately, I don't have a girl, and wouldn't you know it, I already downloaded the game. Looks like I'll need to go into this with my true soulmate, my right hand. Can you beat It Takes Two solo? The rules of this challenge are fairly simple. No one else other than me can control the two characters. I can control one at a time, but that's a fairly slow playstyle, and then I know you guys want to see me fall, so I'm playing ambidextrously. I do, however, value my time, so I'll just be getting to the story's end credits, no need for extra secrets. And one last thing, the game is pretty long, so we're just handling the shed in this video, fighting the vacuum and the toolbox. With the rules out of the way, let's get started with our marital disputes. We start with Cody and May getting into an argument over a dentist appointment, and that pushes them to file a divorce. Wow. Talk about mad love. This upsets Rose and she runs off to the shed to play with her dolls. Her imagination transports Cody and May into the bodies of said dolls, and this humanoid book marches around, telling them how to fix the relationship. Cody and May have the intention span of a five-year-old, so they start heading towards Rose for way back. The beginning gives us no issue. After all, it's just a tutorial area. We explore the place and then explode the nearby stairs, setting three fuses running about. We need to gather these three fuses to gain access to the next area. The first two are easy and teach us how to interact with items, but the third runs away and we have to catch it. Because obviously you're supposed to go like around this corner, and you're supposed to make it to here. Oh, I know you. She got mad hops. Come on, Cody. Stop standing around like there. Even after discovering we have butts of steel, the fuse refuses. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there? To join us and runs off. After a long chase sequence showing us all the acrobatics we can do, that they definitely should have showed us earlier, we find the fuse and bring it back. After lowering the stairs and almost reaching Rose, the book introduces the couple to their old abandoned vacuum cleaner. The book gaslights the vacuum into eating two dolls he's never seen before, and we're sent through his bowels and into another room. Gee, thanks, book. After we walk around a bit, we find our first complication, the vacuum tubes. One person needs to sit on the nozzle and aim the tube while the other person walks through it. It doesn't sound so hard until you realize it uses air. Yeah, I had more problems than I should have. To make it easier, aim Cody upwards first, then walk May the human cannonball inside. We do some more platforming and complete another nozzle puzzle until we reach this room. After you, don't let go. Ah. No, sorry, that, that was just a meme. What's behind it is our next challenge. We're supposed to connect the wires with our bodies to open the way forward. As you would expect, having electricity course through your bodies would put you in quite a... <laughs> Never mind that, but it does immobilize the Buzz character for some time. Unfortunately, as you can see, there are three different breaks we need to connect, and with two people, that means one is going to have to run. I chose May to run because I'm having a lot more difficulty controlling Cody and his stick shift. Like, you sprint by pressing the left stick, the exact same stick you used to walk. I don't know why they didn't just bind sprinting to something else. But oh well. A few tries later, and we walked out of the room as fried as KFC. You gotta do some two parkour after that, but send them in one at a time, and you have enough space to aim them both into the funnels. A bit of 2D platforming and a bit of rotating parkour proceeded. Your your wife's already done this. Come on, Cody. It cannot be Cody, Cody it cannot be that hard. Cody! <laughs> Okay, a lot of rotating parkour proceeded, but other than that, there wasn't much to worry about here. You do reach this section, where you need to raise the platform with one person, jump into the tube with the other, then aim two upwards before the ammo launches out and into oblivion. It's just a tight window, since you need to run with Cody at the same time you get May into the tube, which can mess up May jumping in or Cody running to the nozzle, but a couple more tries and you can make the gap. If you're enjoying this challenge so far, be like Cody and smash the like button, smash the sub button, Smash the Twitch, smash the, smash, Cody you can stop now. And now it's time to face off against the vacuum. Cody and May once again try to console it, but the book is a professional COD player and gaslights get vacuum cleaner by telling them it bought some French replacement. Enraged, we get into our very first boss fight. In the first phase, he does two attacks, the first of which is just a slamming shockwave. When he releases the waves, keep Cody and May as close to each other as you can, so you can jump in tandem. Then he weaponizes your game skills against you, and with that I mean throwing flaming pieces of trash. They hone into your character's location, so run around in circles to avoid their fire. But after this attack is when you can start your counterattack. Two nozzles appear from behind, one made to suck up the trash and one to blow it back into his face. This always happens after the fiery onslaught, so run May to the back of the arena so she rises with the second nozzle. While she can mount the nozzle just fine, Cody had some issues. After both characters finally get on the nozzle, sweep left and right with Cody and aim upwards with May to incinerate the incapacitated. 
Once you've dealt enough damage, it transfers into his second phase, where he buffs his slams much more. He now beats an alteration, and he launches hunks of junk at your location. While there's a whole lot on the screen, you can make it so much easier by completely ignoring May's existence. Leaving May to die might not sound like the best thing, especially in a game that encourages teamwork, but by killing off May, you can focus on Cody and dodge your way into the next attack. After the drastic glow up his first attack had, the developers had no more interest in the second, because rain fire just adds more rain. No need for anything different. Once you've blown the rest of his trash in his face, all it takes is a mashing section, and we've defeated our first boss solo. After getting launched into who knows where and walking out a bit, we get introduced to what is undoubtedly the best part of It Takes Two, our powers. We find Hammer lying on the ground, left there by a certain engineer girl who wants to help his tool friends from rust and sedentarism. Sed seden sedentarian. Being sedentary. Sed Whatever. So he gives his head to May and his nails to Cody. May's hammer is great for, well, smashing things. Pretty original, huh? Cody, in my opinion, got the better ability, wielding Thor's Mjolnir and being able to stick the nail into certain surfaces. Well, I guess May got the actual hammer, but whatever. This is where each person actually gets their own skills, so no need for the generic character term anymore. Unfortunately, this means we're going to need to start double wielding characters because most uses of these special abilities are in sync with one another. For example, there are places where you need to hammer the platform into place, then nail it to keep it there. There are two ways to get around this, the first of which is to aim Cody's nail, then whack with May, then throw Cody's nail, which is a bit hard to handle with only one set of hands. We'll introduce a second way later. Once May learns to swing like Tarzan, we got our second nail, and with that, Cody's power doubles. A little more walking later, we find the reason why I don't want to do all the secrets. So Honestly, I just keep walking. They're not that fun with one person. Some more nail shenanigans later, and this was really cool 2D section, not needing anything new, we come to this hallway. There's a bounce pad May can punch up at the very end, and while it isn't hard to get there, note that Cody's the one with the stick shift run button. And on top of that, the blades are really fast, leaving you with little room to breathe. This is why we chose to play with one keyboard and one controller, because the controller can be carried over the keyboard. Hover your pinky finger over the hammer button, that when you run over with Cody to the right spot, use your pinky finger to launch him upwards. We reach this huge wall May must scale. There are spots where May needs to cling onto walls so Cody can open the way forward, but May is made of wood, and wood and wood can't stick together, so she will slip off if we don't do something fast. While we could just hop with May and keep her afloat while struggling to aim Cody the right way, this is where our second way of throwing nails comes in. Aim with Cody at the spot you need to hit, then cancel the throw. Cody will resume looking at that spot when you resume your throw. So after positioning May, just immediately throw your nail with Cody, and it should hit your target spot on. We also learn here that Cody will retract the nails he looks at first, so make sure to also preload that as well. A couple tries later and we made it to the toolbox, but the toolbox, being as uncooperative as Cody and May, doesn't want to open up to reveal what they're carrying and runs away, initiating our first chase-like boss fight. And believe me, these are some of the hardest challenges we're going to face. Instead of it chasing us, we're luckily chasing it, but he realizes the power of Cody's nails and rains fire upon us every so often. You can see where the nails will land, but they generally land on the flattest places of area, so stick near the edges and slopes. While you could employ a strategy during the vacuum fight and delete one of the characters to lighten your load, unlike back then, you need both of them to proceed. So keep them both alive as long as you can. But if one of them does get skewered by a nail, they won't get hit again. So use a cooldown time to reposition the other one, still standing, to a safe place before mashing free. Nothing new needs to be introduced during the chase sequence, so just keep at it and you'll arrive at the boss fight proper. Once again, make sure to stick together and dodge the rain of nails and hand sweeps in sync. After some time, he'll slam into the left wall with his arm. Use Cody's nails to pin it to place, then give May some trapeze poles to swing off of. You have a lot more time than you think, so don't rush then go ham on the lock until it breaks. After his first lock, he brings out this thing. I don't know, a circular saw? Yeah. He uses it to cut up the board you're standing on, but just stay away from the holes and you should be fine. Nothing's new until you break his second lock when you get really mad. The other hand will start smacking you down with a shovel, but it will always hover over the character it's about to hit, so just focus on that person and avoid getting hit. Once he opens himself up after one final slam, it's Cody's time to shine. Guide Cody over to the shovel as you position May at the yellow button. After crashing down with May, spam as many nail throws as you can. They're already locked in. You should only get two, no matter how hard I try. It never gives me three. But after his first assault, he gets serious. Not only will nails start falling from the sky again, but buzz saws will chop away huge chunks of the floor. You can start sacrificing people if you want, but of course, to be the bestest gamer, keep them both alive for as long as you can. 
Even though the walk space will be very limited, you should still have enough wiggle room to launch off twice more and finish a toolbox off with a bang. With all the tools rescued and Hammer finally restored to his former glory, we get launched over to Mae, only for her to leave the shed and for Book to close the door. Gee, thanks, Book. And that ends the Shed Saga and the first episode of this challenge. Special thanks to everyone who watched till the very end. I really appreciate your determination. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a like, sub, and sharing with your friends. And if you want to watch me tackle the next parts of this challenge, be sure to check out my Twitch channel. I stream not just It Takes Two, but other games like Valorant and others. And thank you so much to all these YouTube creators that made amazing challenge videos themselves. Go check them out. They helped inspire my video, and I think you'll like them as well. Thank you all so much for watching, and this is Game in Person and Toad. Sign it off.